In this clip, we'll graph the conic section called the parabola in its most elementary form. So in order to graph the parabola, the first thing we'll do is go to the file menu and then select new and then move our cursor to worksheet mode. Then we'll type in the equation y equals x, then shift 6 and then 2, enter. So it now knows we're going to be working with y equals x squared. We'll then insert and then we'll go down to plot and a 2D plot. Now in order to plot the curve we'll first select it by going to the left moving our cursor to the left of Y clicking on our left mouse key so it's now been selected. I could copy it and paste it onto the graph or I can push down on the left mouse key and then drag the mouse into the graph and there it graphs it. So there we see the graph has given us a domain from minus 10 to 10 and a range looks like from about 0 to 100. We can be more specific on the domain and range if we want. If I click on this icon, the horizontal axis if I click on Use Data Extents, I can change the horizontal axis from, say, a minus 5, then Tab, and then 5, and then hit Apply or OK. And so now we see the domain is going from a minus 5 to 5. And I can similarly change the range Currently, it's been adjusted from 0 to 25. So if I go to the icon and click on Vertical, unclick Use Data Extents, and then go from, say, minus 1 on our Range Now tab to, say, 5, and then hit OK. Now we see our range is going from minus 1 to 5 and our domain is still at minus 5 to 5. Also, if you click on this icon, the hand icon, and you click, left click on the graph by dragging down, notice the we're seeing part of the curve. We're seeing now the curve below the x-axis where a minus 3 and we can move it to the left or move it to the right so we can see areas of our curve within this window by dragging because I'm keeping my finger on the left mouse key and then when I take it off then it stays and I can modify it take it off and the modification stays there so it gives you examining capabilities on the curve itself Another useful capability we have, if we go to this icon, click on it, and then select the plot menu, and then select under that option the probe info, and we'll say nearest datum, we then can see the coordinates on the line as we move our cursor at various points on the curve. So as I move my cursor there, we see we have 1.0398 as an x-coordinate, 1.08, 1, 1, 2, and so on as a y-coordinate. And so it just gives you an idea of what the coordinates, the actual value of the coordinates on the curve are at, at any particular point in time where you have your cursor located. Now we'll graph the ellipse which is another conic section and the equation we'll use is x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. The center of this ellipse will be at the origin but in order to graph it 
since it's not a function, we'll actually find the equation for the upper half and the lower half. And here we see the equation plus or minus 3 halves times the square root of 4 minus x squared. So solving for y, we see the upper half is, is a positive 3 halves times the square root of 4 minus x squared. And y will be negative when it's equal to a minus 3 halves times the square root of 4 minus x squared. That's giving us the curve underneath the x-axis. We'll begin in worksheet mode. And the first thing we'll do is type in the equation of the ellipse. If we want, we can use the uh, fraction template in order to type in x squared over 4, which makes it a little easier. So if I type in x as the numerator to the power, shift 6, 2, and then tab, it brings me down to the denominator. I type in 4, and then I, with my mouse, move the cursor to the center line of our typing and then type in plus and then I can use the fraction template once again for convenience and so we have y shift 6 and then 2 and then tab brings us down to the denominator and then 9 and then we click on the fraction bar line and then type equals 1 and we've typed in the equation of the ellipse and with maple we don't need to worry about graphing the upper half and the lower half like we do on the TI calculators in general. So the next step will be to insert a plot, in particular a 2D plot, since we're going to be plotting it in two dimensions and what I'll do is select the equation by pressing down the left mouse key and then dragging it across the equation, clicking the right mouse key and selecting copy, or you could use the control C command to copy it once it's been selected. Then I'll move the cursor over the graph and then I'll go ahead and click the right key and on the mouse and select paste and click the left key on that and there we see the graph of our ellipse which almost looks like a circle because of the uh, minor axis from minus 2 to 2 and the major axis from minus 3 to 3 being somewhat similar in length. We can zoom in and zoom out by clicking on the this icon that scales the plot axes so by clicking on that and then dragging the mouse down, notice we're zooming out and our domain and our range is, are getting larger. And similarly we can zoom in by clicking on with the left mouse key and dragging up. So there we're dragging down, zooming out and zooming in and also we can move it around. We can actually move it to the right, or move it to the left, or move it up, or move it down. So we're not really scaling anything, we're just moving the position of the ellipse on the screen so we can examine different aspects of it. And If the curve were larger, we could bring it on screen by translating it back and forth. Similarly, if we were to click on the this icon here and then go to the plot menu and then select probe info and nearest datum would allow us to examine points, coordinates, the x and y coordinates points on our curve. Here we're on the close to the y-axis, we see our x-coordinate is close to 0 and our y-coordinate is close to 3 since we're at the upper half of it. 
And so there we have the graph of the conic section, the ellipse, with the various capabilities we have. Also, if we want, we can change the grid line properties. Notice we have these grids. So by clicking on that, you can change the, the grid lines. And we can specify the number of grid lines. Suppose I change that to 10, hit OK. Then notice it's scaling it. For the grid lines, we have 0.51, 1.5, and 2 now. Whereas on the y-axis, since we didn't change that, we still have the 1, 2, and 3. So it hasn't specified the coordinates between, say, 1 and 2, as we have on the x-axis. And also by clicking on this icon, we can overlay it with the grid lines for examining the curve more closely. In graphing the hyperbola, we will graph it in two parts. Since it's not a function, we will graph the upper half initially, which would be a positive 3 halves times the square root of x squared minus 4. And then we'll graph the lower half, which would be negation 3 halves times the square root of x squared minus 4. Now we're ready to type in the equation of the hyperbola. And again, when starting a document, just click on the file menu, then new, and then worksheet mode. And so we'll first type in the document. We'll go ahead and use the templates that we have by clicking on the expression box. Then your templates show up. So we'll go ahead and select the fraction template. We'll type in x squared, so x, and then shift 6 to get the superscript, and then type in 2, tab, 4, then we'll get back at the fraction bar level by clicking the mouse next to the fraction bar, then we'll type minus, then we'll go to our template, we'll type in y, Shift 6 to get the exponent 2 tab and then 9 and then we'll move our cursor at the fraction bar and then equals 1 then we'll go ahead and insert a plot a 2D plot so we select 2D we'll select our curve I just move the mouse from right to left. Now I'm going to hit Control C to copy that. Then I'm going to position my cursor over the graph. Notice as we move our cursor from the equation down, all of a sudden our cursor icon changes. So I'll type Control V for paste. And there we see the left branch and the right branch of the hyperbola. The domain is going from, it looks like a minus 7 to about 7. We can check that by going to the horizontal range. It's about minus 6.9. Notice the terminology range. We think of, we know that's the domain that's being scaled from a minus 6.9 to a 6.9 because we're at the horizontal. So the horizontal range corresponds to the domain and the vertical range corresponds to the range which has been set from uh, minus 10 to 10. And similarly we can zoom in by clicking on the zoom icon or zoom out. In this case we're zooming out by moving down, zooming in by moving up. And we can also translate by typing on the hand icon and move it to the right, move it to the left, move it down, move it up, depending on what area of the curve it is that you're interested in examining more carefully.